afternoon, everybody. Phil Simons here with Columbia Grain and your Friday afternoon weekly grain market recap. Well, this week was actually an abbreviated trade week as we were closed on Monday in observance of Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So we did have kind of abbreviated session this week, but let's go ahead. I'm going to jump right in and share my screen with you. We're going to navigate to our favorite website, ColumbiaGrain.com. And again, at the upper right hand corner, navigate to Producer Solutions. And that will take you to our Columbia Grain Producer Solutions site, where we house all of our uh, information in terms of market driving news. Uh, but really, again, this week we were uh, an abbreviated session uh, as we were closed on Monday. So the, the weekly export sales report was released today. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at what that report was, was showing us here today. It was actually a fairly decent report in terms of overall volume for really for corn, uh, for soybeans and for wheat. Uh, but corn, starting on the left-hand side of your screen, you can see that corn came in at 44 uh, and a half million bushels, which is a good week for corn. And in all reality, it's actually printed an eight-week high uh, in terms of overall volume for corn sales. So that was really great to see uh, here this morning. We also did see a little bit of new crop corn being sold as well, just about 3.4 million bushels there too. Uh, so it was good to see, um, you know, the volume increasing for U.S. corn exports. Uh, next up, we'd take a look at soybeans. Uh, came in at 36.2 million bushels uh, for sales that were done last week. You know, again, this was a, a printed a five-week high in terms of what we have been seeing. So again, great to see uh, some more uh, demand come into the U.S. Uh, in terms of export sales. Uh, wheat uh, actually had a pretty good number as well, coming in at 17.4 million bushels, and a little bit of new crop uh, kind of sm smattered in there as well, about 1.3 million bushels. But really, the uh, in terms of volume for by class wheat. We see that spring wheat came in at 6.7 million bushels. Uh, soft white wheat had another good uh, another good round uh, at 5.6 million. And then winter wheat came in at 3.9 million. So overall, a uh, pretty good uh, report in terms of volume and sales uh, that we saw uh, this, this past week. Uh, the other, uh, so let's take a look and see really how that uh, equated to what the overall ranges and the net changes that we saw on the week. You know, we can definitely see that the weekly ranges are still wide, you know, in terms of what we have been seeing. Uh, but we look at corn on the left hand side, we see the weekly range was 20 cents week on week. When we settled today, we actually did uh, add five cents to where we started on Monday. Uh, look, take a look at beans up next. The weekly range there was 41 cents, but we did have a weekly change of dropping 12 cents from where we started on, on uh, actually on Tuesday, excuse me. And then when we take a look at Kansas wheat, uh, we actually had a range of 43 cents on the week. We actually only able to hold on to five cents of that overall range. And Chicago wheat, we had a 33 cent range. We actually had a net penny loss uh, in Chicago wheat. And when we look at Minneapolis wheat, we see that the range was uh, 26 cents. We actually able to hold on to two cents of that uh, weekly range. So again, you know, a lot of input, a lot of inputs and influences in the market. Right now, there was a lot of uh, reports in terms of South American weather and potentially getting some more moisture down there. Uh, so that was putting a little bit of downward pressure on beans, but definitely good again to see that kind of equate into more uh, sales coming our way. Uh, the other aspect to continue to look at uh, as we move forward, at least in the next couple of months, is going to be the planning intentions report. Again, that'll be out at the end of March, and we'll be talking about corn uh, and soybeans primarily, and then how those two are going to really, uh, you know, fight for the acres in terms of what to expect with that. There are some early, early reports coming out that uh, corn could see, you know, an increase of up to two to two and a half million acres. You know, and similarly with uh, with beans, looking at like around a hundred or a million to a million and a half acre increase as well. So again, that's definitely going to be a debate that's going to start to hit the market and definitely uh, have an influence in the overall prices. But again, when we look at, you know, strategy going forward, looking at new crop soybeans, again, really do stick out like a sore thumb to me. Uh, even though we have taken a little bit out of the prices here this the last couple of weeks, you know, you're still hovering right around a $13 cash price, you know, at a lot of our locations for new crop beans. So definitely take a look at that, you know, get your orders out there and working with your local Columbia Grain merchandiser, right, in terms of cash, uh, HTAs or basis contracts, and also take a look at our accumulator contracts as well. Gets you a little bit of a premium to what you could do, you know, your traditional hedge to arrive for. 
So be sure to get a hold of your local Columbia Grain Merchandiser and take a look at all your options with that. Other than that, that's about it for the week. And just remember, the market is not logical, it is psychological. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll talk with you next week.